We want to take a minute and um, highlight that the Clan McLean does have, uh, in Scotland, has, uh, it's really Dougie McLean's son, produces a, uh, a gin. Um, and one of their few requests was that uh, we actually share that, that, that uh, the creation of that gin um, with with the, the clan membership. It's called the Gale Signature Scottish Gin. And I'm just gonna play a quick, um, a quick video of, of it for everybody. For now, I'd like to bring on uh, Doug Wyatt for our uh, first whiskey tasting and our first toast. He will be, for those of you at home following along, he will be, his first uh, whiskey is Tobermory 10. Well, hello everyone, and I'm very glad to be a part of our virtual McLean gathering today, and I thank you for joining us. You heard our chief say, I don't know how this virtual thing is going to work. Well, neither do I. So we'll figure it out as we go. And you heard Patrick talk about us being a warrior clan. And I'm going to tell you that I think we're also a good whiskey drinking clan too. So let's get started. First thing I want to tell you is if you don't have all three of the whiskeys that we're doing today, don't worry about it. Any whiskey, even if it's just one, even if you don't have whiskey, you can participate in our uh, virtual whiskey tasting because a good whiskey tasting is a chance for fellowship and enjoyment, and that's what we want to do right now, okay? I've invited George, to our, our pipe major for us today, to be here to help us with that because if I was just tasting whiskey, I would just be drinking. But if George is here, we can share, and it's a tasting. So we're, we're going to do that together. A couple of other things. Uh, we sent out, as part of this, and I know you can't see this now, but there was a form we sent out. It's a virtual whiskey tasting form. And you can use that or you can choose not to use it. And I will tell you a little bit about it. And I know it's very bright on here, but it's in two parts. The top part is just your uh, experience with the whiskey. And you can, you can read the instructions and mark it as you feel like, oh, I like this. It kind of feels, tastes like this. And it's just a record. And then the bottom part is a, uh, I call it, Doug Seabath, it, I, well, we can actually give a score to certain characteristics of the whiskey, or it works for wine too, but you can give certain characteristics for the whiskey, and then if you're tasting several whiskeys, you can go back, and if you want cheap, may have to make a choice about purchase, then you've got a score that you can follow, and you can, you can read through and follow that uh, if you want to, or use it anywhere else you want to, and I want to thank the uh, Aiken Single Malt Society here in our small town, and George and I are both members, we have a very good, very active single malt society. And that's a good way to taste many different whiskeys. Uh, just through the single malt society, I bet I have been able to taste well over 220, 230 different whiskeys. And so uh, it's, it's just a good way to do that. One of the things when we do a whiskey tasting is you assume it just has something to do with drinking. But we're going to look at the Tobermory 10 uh, first, okay? And treat it like you would a book. When you go to buy, look at the box. And this works for any whiskey. Read what the box says, and it'll give you notes about the nose, the palate, the finish. It'll tell you some about how it was malted or peated. It'll tell you something about where it was made. Those things are good to know before you do the tasting. On the bottle, you may actually have some more information. So it's worth reading the bottle as well, okay? And you can always go online and look these whiskeys up. There are several good websites that come from Scotland that talk about uh, the tasting uh, 
categories for specific whiskeys. Today, we're going to do Tobermory 10 first. A little bit later in, in the broadcast, we will do our uh, LeCheck 10, and then we will do our Oban. I chose these three whiskeys because when, when Mary Sue and I do our clan gathering tents at the different Highland games, I always try to have these whiskeys there because they're from Tobermory on the Isle of Mull. And when we have Clan McLean's coming to our tent, we share whiskey, okay? Because it is our family Isle of Mall whiskey. Family is just where we are, okay? Uh, I chose Oban because it's right across the lock. It's on the mainland and uh, the three whiskeys, Tobermory is gonna taste different than Oban. I'm not trying to persuade you, but Tobermory is gonna taste different than Oban. It's, and Oban is gonna be a little bit closer to the Lachette. And so we've got a range of whiskeys we're gonna try. So to get started, George, have a, have a glass. And when we do our tasting, I'm going to say this about whiskey drinking up front we won't, because we don't have as much time for our other segments. Whiskey tasting and drinking whiskey is a skill and a joy. Uh, it's not, to, it's once you get to the point where you can't really distinguish what the tastes are too more, you, it's anymore, you've had too much and you need to switch to something cheaper. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to taste this and, and I'm going to go through how I was trained to taste. Okay. And it's something like this, where we're using Glen Clan gas glasses. And so you can look at the color and you can look at the legs, much like you do a uh, wine, same, same kind of process. And you can notice things like what's the body of the fluid, what is the uh, type of legs that it has, it, you know, different things. And you can read about those. But one of the most important things to do is before you drink, inhale it. I mean, saturate your nostrils and your sinuses with this, so much so when you inhale it that you can almost taste it on the back of your throat. Okay, and that starts to give you a little bit of the flavor to begin with and trains your tongue into what you're going to taste. Okay, now take a sip. Just a, look, just a little bit to start with because we want to get two or three different tastings out of this, okay? But when you sip it, chew it. Don't be delicate about it. Don't be dainty about it. When you get when you swallow it, it should be it should cover all over your tongue, front, back, sides, underneath, everywhere. Now this is not interactive, so I can't hear your thoughts about it. <clears throat> Woo. But, you know, what is the weight or feel of the whiskey in your mouth? How intense or subtle are those aromas? How powerful and how complex are the, the different flavors that you can taste? What do you taste? Did you smell floral, fruity, spicy? You know, what did you taste? Did you taste uh, peaty, tobacco, coffee, chocolate, peach? It can be a lot of different things. Just for the record, this is Tobermory, and I believe that this is a very good description of it. On the nose, we inhaled it first. You pick up a little bit of the grass, the malt, and the oak. Uh, I still have a slight flavor of grass, at least to me now. On your palate, did you taste any gingerbread? I sometimes do and sometimes don't, but I do taste the honey, and I taste that slight bit of fruit that's in there and uh, aniseeds, a uh, little bit of that, but I, that's, that's a little more difficult for me, but you might pick right up on it. And then on the finish, I do pick up a little ginger and definitely some oak. Mm -hmm. There's some definite oak there, a little bit of dark chocolate, I think it's dark chocolate, and a little bit, a little nutty, a little almond on it. Now, we can actually change that. During a, a regular tasting, they, you will typically have some water, and I use a dropper, and we'll put one drop in, okay? That one drop will change the flavor, and it's a, it's a good, it's just a good way to explore this whiskey even more. And you can definitely 
Mm -hmm. See the change in the flavor. Opens it. Hmm? It opens it. Yeah, well, op it opens the whiskey. That, that, I think the actual range of flavors for this whiskey with that drop of water increase. Okay, well, one, if one drop of water is good, is it better with two? And this is going to be starting to be totally your preference when we do this. We'll try it with two. Now, see, for me, that changes the finish mm -hmm. more so than, than, than the aroma or anything else. The taste on the tongue is different. Yeah, it, and, and it actually changes the feel or of the body of the whiskey. So I'm trying to try see where we are on our time. I think I have four minutes or three minutes left. And uh, you can try a third drop. Do you have enough for a third drop? Oh, you better, better pour us. Oh, yeah. That's, this is a deliberate thing. <laughs> After a good whiskey tasting, you know. I want to be scientific. Yeah, I want to be scientific. So we'll try. Now we got to try three drops, yeah, you right? Put three in. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, we'll give that a try. Okay, so we've got enough left. We've had a little bit about how we're going to go through these whiskeys for our virtual whiskey tasting. Doesn't matter what whiskeys you have, or even if you only have one, we can do the same thing, okay? And I hope you join us during our next when we try the LeCheck 10 and when we try the Open 14. So uh, we want to end this with a toast. And I found some very old toasts <clears throat> from Scotland, and I would like to use those during our whiskey tasting. But I'm going to modify it a little bit, okay? So to all the claims, that are now, that have been, or that ever will be, to sum up all, be merry, I advise, and as we're merry, may we always be wise. Slange of all. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. for that introduction to uh, McLean area whiskeys and the whiskey tasting. Um, stay tuned as we obviously have two more uh, whiskeys coming up throughout the next uh, hour and 20 minutes. Okay, thank you guys for coming back and sticking with us for the second whiskey tasting. I hope you actually have finished your first whiskey tasting. You know, whiskey tasting, just a little bit to start with. After, after four o'clock, you can make your further decisions, okay? Well, the second whiskey we're going to taste today is our LeCheck, okay? And uh, LeCheck tells us a little bit of one of those age-old questions of what's under the kilt? LeCheck, good whiskey, my friends, good whiskey. Oh, there it is, good whiskey, okay? So if anybody ever asks you what's under the kilt, Good whiskey. <laughs> okay, so same thing for the LeCheck. We're going to take a, and the AIG is, is Czech, uh, Chick, Chig, however you want to say it. I, it's, it's very similar to that. Uh, I'm a boy raised in the South, so I have a very Southern slang to my Gaelic, but uh, it's not LeDeg. It's LeCheck, okay? Read the box, it tells you about the nose, uh, says sweet briny smokiness. Uh, on the palate, it's going to be uh, spicy pepper and peaty smoke with vanilla malts, okay? And then on the finish, a spicy white pepper and sweet vibrant licorice with cloves and maybe a lingering saltiness. We'll see if we agree with that, okay? So, uh, and we'll do the same thing and you still, and. You have your scoring sheet, and you can put more than one whiskey on your scoring sheet if you want to. That's okay. But uh, we'll try it and see what we think. We'll observe the color. We'll observe the body. We'll observe uh, just the general aroma. Remember, inhale, saturate those sinuses. 
And I guarantee you, if you remember what you tasted first, remember both of these come from the same distillery. Okay, made a little bit differently. The Tobermory and this Lecheck come from the same distillery on, on the Isle of Mall. Both bottles say Isle of Mall on them if you get one and you want to use it when you're doing Clan McLean things. But I know on my nose, the aroma is very different than the first. So we'll give it a taste. Remember, don't be dainty, chew it. Make sure you use all the taste buds on your tongue, top, bottom, back, underneath. You'll still pick up a little bit of aroma just from your, from your tasting as well. Definitely, you can taste the peat. It's got a little bit of smokiness to it. It's not like an Ardbeg or a Lafroy where you feel like your face has been shoved into a campfire. It's much more delicate than that. I definitely can taste some of the saltiness. Mm -hmm. I really like that. Longer finish. Much longer finish. I agree with George on that. It's got a much longer finish to it. It's not as peppery on the tongue as the first one was. No, but, and I get, I get my pepper on the finish. I don't know about yeah, you, but I get yeah. my pepper generally on the finish. Yeah. And it, it's a very, I'm actually not quite sure I know the difference between black pepper and white pepper, but <laughs> it's, it's peppery on the yeah. finish. But, well, let's try, let's do what we did before, and we'll try a drop of water to see if it opens. And if, if you think about the chemistry, you know, you've got a drink here that is about, I don't know, 40, 40% alcohol or so. A little drop of water without alcohol is a chemical reaction that helps open those flavors. Changes the aroma a little bit. Actually changes, doesn't change the color much, just with one drop, but it does change the body a little bit. And as we said before, with the bottle, with the, with the first tasting, even with the first drop of water, inhale it first, then chew it. Mm -hmm. Good. To me, particularly with the uh, Lecheck, that one drop of water makes it a lot gentler mm -hmm. than, than the first. You know, sometimes we talk about whiskeys having a bite. That bite is that when you when you drink, when you take a tasting of the whiskey, and it feels like your tongue goes, they call that the whiskey bite. And this, the drop of water will diminish that bite just a little bit. Mm. How much is in this bottle? It might make it through the rest of this broadcast. I don't know <laughs> because I really like this whiskey, but it's 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 one of my all-time favorites. Let's let's try a second drop of water. And you'll have to tell me what you think. I can't tell. Uh, what you think about your whiskey, but I hope you're keeping your score sheets. Just, I know people drink whiskey and you drink what you like, okay? And you'll develop and remember the things that you like. There are so many whiskeys, not including the Japanese whiskeys. I've been told that there are about 540, 550 whiskeys in Scotland, okay? And between George and I, because of our single malt society relationship, and I actually got to work in Scotland for a while. The, I've, got, I've tasted quite a few of them, but there's so many more. And you can't remember them all. And you have your favorites. But if you start tasting them all, you can develop a scoring system that helps you remember. And you may come back a year later and say, hey, I really like this Boone Hobbin. Mm -hmm. Or I really, I really like this Glen Kinchy. Mm -hmm. Or something like that. Some, some whiskey that we're not tasting today. But you've got a score sheet on it or at least some sort of memory aid to help you. Well, you, let's try the third drop on this. We've got a minute or so. I'm, I'm kind of oh, out again. I did that deliberately once again. Uh, that'll work. Yeah, me too. <laughs> okay. Uh, it, it's tough, uh, you know, tasting. You got to. Oh, that's all right. Okay, let's try this again. We're about to run out of time. Once again, uh, we have a toast. That goes with this tasting. This is a very old toast from what I understand. And here we go. 
to whiskey or all the ills of life victorious. Slangeva. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. You're on mute. <laughs> I'm sorry you guys missed all those brilliant words. I'm sorry that Connie is not on, but I'm very happy that we're being asked to drink whiskey a little bit earlier. So uh, this time we're going to be tasting some Oban. Uh, but first, I want to mention a couple of things to you before we actually get to our tasting. Uh, I make no claims to be the great McLean whiskey international expert, Charles McLean. Okay, the McLean family has probably the world's best whiskey tasting, whiskey knowledge expert. If you've never seen a Charles McLean book or look for him on Google or someplace like that, you need to. Uh, I don't have his actual book with me here uh, today. I have it someplace else. But one of the things you might want to do as uh, an accomplished or developing whiskey takers find a few books. There are, there are a lot of books out there that tell you things. And sometimes going to the Highland Games, I'll carry some small book like this just to have in my back pocket or in my scoring to uh, be able to help evaluate whiskeys. Something else to think about. Okay, something else to think about is when you carry whiskey around. You know, everybody should have their little uh, uh, flask. This is actually a McLean flask. It's uh, stainless steel with McLean crest on it. And this this is something you might carry around in your scoring or in your back pocket or I pretty much carry it everywhere, you know, just so that you have the ration of whiskey you might need somewhere. But, you know, uh, we're all trained to be prepared on all the time and, and like being a uh, boy scouts who carry a band-aid in their wallet everywhere they go you might need some little emergency whiskey flask like these and you can find these in a lot of different places it's always good to have a little emergency whiskey flask with you wouldn't you agree george uh, i keep my flask with my bank pipes okay that's that's very good this, this is open you've probably seen the container and i apologize for the lighting you can kind of see it when it's down a little bit like this Open is a 14-year whiskey. It's been in the cast 14 years. It's a little more expensive. And, I, and I'll mention, when we tasted the Tobermory, it's typically under, uh, it's, you can get it for about $60, somewhere between $60 and $70. The Lechec, uh, you're probably going to pay under $70, but maybe $75, $74. It depends on kind of where you get it, whether it's on sale or not. Open uh, is going to be just under $90. When you buy it in the bottle. So it, it's, it's much, much more expensive as we go. I bought it at $100 last time. Yeah, Saturday. yeah. So it's, it's a little more expensive. And I don't know if you've noticed, but whiskeys are becoming more expensive because of new tariff rules in the EU. So we're going to try some Oban. Oban is not from the Isle of Mull. Oban is from the mainland. It's considered a West Highland whiskey. Uh, both Tobermory's are considered island whiskeys. And one of the things about Oban is there are seven whiskeys that are considered classic whiskeys uh, for Scotland, and I'm looking for my sheet of paper, but I can read it from right here as well. Uh, the classic Lowland whiskey is Glen Kinchy. The classic Highland whiskey is Dalwini. Uh, the classic Speyside is a Craggenmore. The classic Sky whiskey is the Talisker, one of my favorite, and the classic Island whiskey is Lagavulin. Okay, uh, and Oban is one of those classic whiskeys. So we're going to taste some Oban now. Debbie and I uh, toured Oban uh, last time we were in Scotland. It's an excellent tour. Uh, that that brings up a good point, George. Thank you. Is that when you go to Scotland, you can see the Highlands, you can see Edinburgh, Glasgow's a lot of fun. Uh, the borders are a lot of fun. Going way up to Aberdeen is fun, and going all the way up uh, just to fish. Is great, but take some time to tour the distilleries, okay? Take some time to tour the distilleries. Just seeing how this nectar of life, this water of life, used to be good, is made is wonderful. So if you if you take a look at your oven, you'll notice the color's a little different. 
the body is a little bit heavier, okay? And on the nose, the aroma is a little bit different as well. And just some of the tasting notes that you can see uh, for Oban is that you should pick up oranges, lemons, and pears on the nose, according to them. Now let's see. But remember, saturate and then taste. You can certainly feel the difference. To me, it's almost like the body has, it's a little bit oily. It's a little bit mm -hmm. slicker. I don't know what the word would be, mm -hmm. but it's, it's a little bit different. But wow, what a flavor. And the finish, very smooth. Mm -hmm. Very smooth finish. It does not have the uh, tip of the tongue action that I think you get with leche. Yeah. But it's very good on finish. What do you pick up in there, George? I like, um, it, it's not as harsh on the palate in total. It's smoother. Um, but I still get a little peppery feel mm -hmm. from the alcohol. What about fruit? I taste a little bit of fruit in there. To me, there's a little pear. Um, I'm not sure I pick up any citrus in this right now. Yeah. And one, one of the things about whiskey tasting that I think you'll come to enjoy, you can taste the same whiskey separated by a little bit of time, and you'll get a few different flavors. So that's nice to have that ability. Our society has had uh, dinners where we pair appetizers, soups, uh, main courses, dishes with different whiskeys. And it's amazing how those meals will bring out the flavor of the whiskey. We're doing the one drop tasting now to see how one drop of water might open up. Remember, just because you can't put a drop in does not mean you still don't need to inhale, saturate your sinuses and your flavor, and then take a taste. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. Dangerously good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's try two while we're thinking about it. All right. See what you think about that. And just because I'm using Oban and because I've used Tobamore and because I've used the Lechec, you could be doing this with any whiskey. And it could be an Isla, it could be a Space on, it could be a Highland, it could be anything. And so uh, it, it's just the joy of tasting the whiskey, okay? One of the things that makes Scotland, Scotland, is the presence of the single malt whiskeys, okay? A lot of people make them. They're made in the United States now. Japan started a few years ago. And to be quite honest, when Japan started making their whiskeys, they were awful, at least to yeah, me. Yeah. But now they're much better. There are a couple of really good Japanese single malts. But they went to Scotland. They went to Scotland and learned how to make them. So uh, I, I'm kind of glad for that, just so we have more sources. I think it's sweeter now with more drops. It tastes oh, I agree more. with that. Absolutely. It, it's just sweeter in general. Well, we definitely have to try three drops. Yeah, yeah. And oh, oh, what? We, we have the same problem. We don't seem to be able to have, have enough in the last to have three drops. Yeah, we'll, we'll finish this up in a minute. <laughs> okay, we'll try this and see what you think. It's even sweeter. Yeah, it is. It's opened it up. It's a it little is. bit sweeter. Yep. Yeah. The finish. It's a longer, sweeter finish. Yeah, it's a longer, sweeter finish, but I felt a little bright burst of flavor yeah. between uh, mid-tongue and back-tongue, and it was just like a whoom. As you come in there, was a, there was a, yeah. just a, a pulse of flavor. Yeah. yeah, very good. Well, it's always sad when you come to the end of your whiskey tasting. I feel depressed. So uh, 
we, we will we'll end with our final uh, toast, and I'm going to ask George to give that toast, and then we'll say shalom to everybody, and thank you. Well, here's to you as good as you are, and here's to me as bad as I am, and as good as you are, and as bad as I am, I'm as good as you are, as bad as I am. Shalom Shabbat. Shalom Shabbat, George and Doug. Thank you so much for conducting the whiskey tasting. The comments on Facebook and YouTube have been uh, quite interesting about how they can get these um, whiskeys. Uh, they do have one question, and uh, is there any online website that they could go to to try and order um, some of these whiskeys, especially this comment came from someone in Canada? There are, there are two or three websites. But the one website where I have seen most whiskeys that I have ever wanted to find is a website called findrams.com. F-I-N-E-D-R-A-M-S.com. It's out of Germany. Uh, the prices will be in euros, but they have a, like a flat rate to ship to the U.S. with like less than a two-week shipping period. So, and I think it's only like 20 euros or so to ship. So findrams.com, if you can't find it there, good chance you won't find it anywhere. And that reminds me of one more thing. There are McLean whiskeys, okay? Uh, the McLean whiskeys that you can find online are, are uh, blended whiskeys. They're not single malts. There may be single malts, but I don't know about them. But they're blended whiskeys, and you should sometimes find them, and they're almost always, no, I'd, I'd say relatively expensive. Uh, but not always. You find them at the whiskey auction site. So if you just if you just Google whiskey auctions, you can probably find some McLean whiskeys, but it'll probably be a blended whiskey. Uh, 